I've created a new Mac tool that can fully automate setting hog cues and memory cues on multiple tracks at once in Rekordbox 6 and 7 for free. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it to massively speed up your workflow and avoid paying for third party tools. Before we get into this, I want to give a big shout out to DJ CB. Check out his channel if you haven't already. He made a video a few years ago trying to tackle this same problem with a very cheeky little script. It inspired me to create my own version from scratch with more features, customization, and no need to understand code. I've tested this out as much as I can, but there might still be a few bugs. So before you try it out, please back up your library. All right, with that out of the way, let's look at how you can get it. I'm adding AutoCue to my other Mac tools, which are a bonus for newsletter subscribers. To join them, head to the link in the description to subscribe for free. In the welcome email, click the download link, follow the instructions and download and open the Mac Tools PDF. Find the page with AutoCue on and click download. You'll get prompted to add it to the Shortcuts app. And that's it, it's now installed. And if you're an existing subscriber, I'll be sending you the link as well. Before we get into actually running the tool, there's a few small things we need to do in Rekordbox first. Make sure you're in export mode by selecting it in the drop down on the top left. Next, you'll need to make sure all the key mappings in Rekordbox are set back to their defaults. Go to Preferences, Keyboard, Reset to Defaults. Because AutoCue works off the grid, it means the tracks you plan to add cues to need to be analyzed first. If you haven't done that already, right click and choose Analyze. And finally, you need to load the first track you want to process into the playout. That's all the setup done. Now it's time for the fun part, showing you what this thing can actually do. To make things easy, I've created a new playlist with a few discount house tracks. But AutoQ does work in the collection view as well. The first step is to define how far apart I want my cue points to be. This is really handy depending on what genre you mix or how you like to DJ. You can do it right in export mode by clicking the drop down here. You can choose anything from 4 beats apart to 32 bars. I'd avoid the fine setting. I personally use 8 bars so I'll set mine to that for this demo. Everything's now ready to run and we can start processing the tracks. In the Shortcuts app, press play on AutoCue. Now the first time you run this tool you'll probably get asked to set a couple of permissions but you only need to do this once. One of them will be permission to run Apple's script. Click Allow. The other will be to give it accessibility permissions so it can control Rekordbox. Open up system settings as prompted and turn the toggle on to give the Shortcuts app permission to run. Now I have run into a few small issues with this being a bit temperamental. So if you run into any issues, try turning that toggle on and off or worst case scenario, restart the Shortcuts app. I wanted this tool to be as flexible as possible. So I've included three different modes for different cue setting situations. When you run the shortcut, you'll be prompted to choose the mode first. So let's run through what each of them do. Mode one will set three hot cues and three memory cues going forwards from the first grid line of the track. This mode is useful when you have a huge amount of tracks to prep because it's a bit faster to run. Auto cue will now ask you how many tracks you want to process. This is super handy because sometimes you just want to prep one track really quickly. One track is the default, but in this case, I'm going to do all 21 tracks in the playlist. So that's what I'll type in here. To process all 21 tracks on my M1 Max took about one minute 20. Mode two will set three hot cues and 10 memory cues forwards from the first grid line of the track. This mode is useful when you have fewer tracks, more time available, or you just want as many cue point options as possible. Once you've chosen the mode, again, it'll ask you how many tracks you want to process. I'll put in 21 again so I can do the whole playlist. Mode two took about two minutes 40 to process all the tracks. Mode three is my favorite though. It will set three hot cues and three memory cues backwards from the playhead. That sounds a bit weird, so let me show you why this is so useful. On this track, I've navigated the playhead to the drop. Now I can simply run the shortcut, choose mode three, and it will run backwards from that point, setting three hot cues and three memory cues leading up to the drop. It's kind of like working out where the finishing line is and then building a path up to it. And remember, you can customize the distance of those cues using the drop down in export mode. It's worth mentioning because this mode relies on manually setting the playhead. You can only do it on one track at a time. But as with any great source of power, there are a few caveats you need to be aware of before you start using this tool. I predict your number one question is why does this only set three hot cues? Well, by default in Rekordbox, only the first three hot cues have a default key mapping, and that's what the tool uses to hook into to work. 
I wanted it to work out of the box for as many people as possible, so that's why there's only three. But if you do want to set more hot cues than that, as a workaround, you can use mode 2, which will set 10 memory cues. You can then use the memory cues themselves to quickly hop around the track and set any additional hot cues. While we're talking about hot cues, also be aware the tool will automatically remove any existing hot cues in the first three slots before it resets them. The next thing to mention is the tool relies on an accurate grid to work properly. Here you can see the grid is a bit wonky and not quite aligned to the beat of the track. If I run the tool you'll see the cue points will therefore also be misaligned. Recordbox gets the grid right most of the time, but no algorithm is perfect, even on third party paid tools. If any cue points do get messed up, you can simply fix the grid on that particular track and then rerun the tool only on that one. As I mentioned before, modes 1 and 2 start setting cues from the first grid line of the track, not the first beat. On this track, the grid itself is correct. If we look at the drop, it's actually in the right place. But there's this little bit of nonsense just before the first downbeat at the start of the track. The tool will start setting cues from this point, which we don't want. In CB's version, he tried to work around this by using Recordbox's feature it used to have where it sets a memory cue on the first beat of the track. I did take a look at this as well, but it looks like they've removed it in Recordbox 7, probably to try and upsell their cue analysis feature. To be honest, it never worked that well for me anyway, so I think there's actually a better solution. I'd recommend just rerunning mode 3 on the offending track. Rather than setting cues from the dodgy bit at the start of the track, find a cue point you actually want to set, like the drop, and work backwards from there. And finally, you'll need to make sure Recordbox is active and open when it runs. The tool will automatically put it in the foreground, but don't go off and start playing Minecraft or something. If you start doing other stuff on your computer at the same time, it will just break. So the best bet here is to just go and make a cuppa. But setting cues is only one way you can automate your DJ library. In this video, I show you other ways you can use automation to massively speed up your prep time in Recordbox.